name is Dr. Evelyn Callan, and I'm a retired professor, a professor emeritus in anthropology and human rights at York University. Well, I've always been very interested in human behavior. And when I was an undergraduate study at U of T, I did all my degrees at University of Toronto. I, um, all my courses were social sciences, and the only one I didn't take was anthropology. And a, a lot of uh, other students said to me, why didn't you take anthropology? There's this very charismatic professor who teaches it, and that's wonderful. So I, I, when I was finished my BA, I was uh, in the Institute of Child Study, studying ch childhood education. And you were allowed to take uh, another course outside of that, but it had to do with ch children. Uh, so anyhow, I found this course by Carpenter and figured out a way that it, it was at least partially child-rearing in other cultures. So I took the course and it opened me up to different ways of living. I've always felt, of my, felt myself to be an oddball. I mean, not fitting in exactly. Um, I don't know, my friends call me funky. But whatever it is, I knew there had to be something else besides the society I lived in. And um, so this opened me up to the fact that there was not one, there were all kinds of different societies and cultures equally as, one equally as good as the other, uh, but people just behaved in different ways and thought in different ways, uh, and, and each considered themselves fine. So, I really liked that. And so I went on to, to study anthropology uh, a variety of ways and a variety of cultures. At one time I thought of going to South Africa because my professor was from South Africa. But I didn't, I stayed in Canada and I began to focus more and more on Canada. And then after I'd been, um, after I graduated and I'd been teaching at York University and um, there was a lot of talk uh, in Canada about constitutional change and about putting in a Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And uh, I became very interested in that because I'd been studying the international human rights uh, for quite a long time because I wrote a book with my husband, which is the first book I ever wrote, wrote called Anatomy of Racism, Canadian Dimensions. And it won uh, an award from the Canadian Human Rights Foundation for the best work on human rights for that year. And it was presented by the Governor General of Canada, then Roland Michener, at Governor House. And uh, both my husband and I were invited to be on the board of the Canadian Human Rights Foundation. Well, my husband, who was chairman of the anthropology department at University of Toronto at that time, and very busy in an international project, simply didn't have time to do it. I think probably not that much interest either, but I did. So I sat on the board, and which was composed mainly of lawyers, 99% lawyers, some political scientists, and um, I would ask questions. And uh, they would say, well, that's not a legal question. So I would say, but it's a legitimate question. <laughs> and this went on over and over and over. Finally, I said, it's not only legal. Human rights are human rights for people. And it's, it, it's not only legal rights. It's principles. It's moral principles that are embedded in international human rights legislation. So I started looking at that very seriously and 
eventually started incorporating it into my writing as my framework of my writing. And I've now written 12 books. I'm on my 13th. <laughs> 11 of them have a human rights framework. And the one that doesn't is the one that won the award <laughs> that got me into the, uh, into the Human Rights Education Board. So it's, it's very ironic how I got into it. And um, all the time I was in anthropology and doing work in anthropology. And because my husband was an anthropologist as well, we went around the world studying a whole lot of different cultures. We were in India, in Australia. Uh, oh, we spent a year in, Polynesia, in French Polynesia. And so we did study other cultures. We studied and together. That's also part of my travels. And uh, a lot of my travels were with my husband and they involved work and also travel. I like both. Well, again, I wanted to see the world, just like I wanted to understand people. I wanted to see all the different parts of the world. And um, so even before I met, met and married my husband, well, he was my second husband, uh, with my first husband, we traveled, we traveled to Europe, and uh, I was studying painting at that time. <laughs> I'm very diversified in my interests. And I wanted to go everywhere where they had the masters painters. So I went to Italy and France and all the places they have these things. I, I traveled quite a bit before I became an anthropologist, but not to the places I went to as an anthropologist. As an anthropologist, I, I spent a year in Samoa and three years off and on in the Canadian Arctic in a little place called Glulik, which is uh, across from the north of Baffin Island, way above the tree line. So those are about as different as you can get. I enjoyed, I enjoyed them very much. I was born in Toronto and my background is Jewish. Jews were the minority in Toronto at that time and they were very discriminated against. I was born downtown pro where probably Chinatown is now, or Elizabeth Street, something around there. And then as I grew up, I spent most of my time in that area. And um, my parents were very liberal. And even though I was very, I was discriminated against, I was called the dirty Jew. I came home and my mother, I cried and I said to my mother, why am I dirty? She said, you're not dirty. And she went on to explain to me that some people just don't accept differences. But that didn't, that didn't spoil me as far as ta other people and other cultures because those incidents were not incidents with people I knew or cared about. Those were just, you know, yelling on the street. But I, I did experience discrimination, both as a Jew and as a woman. As a woman, when I went into graduate school and, oh, Women have been discriminated on forever. They always will be. Definitely. And not only my experience of discrimination, but later on, as I grew up, of course, there were people here from all over the world. And, um, and so a lot of my friends experienced discrimination. My students experienced discrimination. I mean, racism was a just rampant and um, so that was again 
I used to give courses on race and ethnic relations. That was one of my main areas before I broadened into minorities of all sorts. And uh, my students would say at the end of the year, well, yes, now we know all about it, but what do we do about it? And I thought about that, and that's when I seriously got into human rights. Because even today, people don't know what to do about it. They don't know that you have access to human rights commissions, that you can make complaints, you can make cases against discrimination, there are laws, there's a charter. Even today, a lot of people don't understand that. And uh, so I said, well, that's what I'm going to devote my life to, writing about that and hopefully enlightening people and getting them to try to do something about it. I like to take long walks. It's a little bit difficult for me now because I have osteoarthritis. So I, I'm limited in some of those things that I used to do. Uh, I particularly love to be on the beach and take walk on the ocean and love walking along the ocean with my feet in the ocean and the sand. I could walk for miles. I also love to read books of all kinds. Now that's out because my sight is limited. But instead I watch, uh, I watch, I can watch DVDs on my computer uh, because my computer has a very sharp screen and I can, I can watch those. I can't watch television. And um, I like British movies. I like classic movies, but I like anything with Colin Firth. <laughs> He's my absolute hero. And um, I have all DVDs with all his main things. And I heard late, well, he became my hero when he was, played the role of, of Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. They have just completed a statue, eight-foot statue of him, standing in a pool in Ealing Studios, Lon London, where, where in fact is where he d dived in. He didn't dive into an actual pool, it's full of junk. But he's standing in the middle of the pool as Mr. Darcy. <laughs> and there are people swimming around who look like you know, little tiny things. I couldn't believe this. I said, I've got to go and see it. Be a model in your own life of what you're promoting. Don't just, it's not just words you speak or books you write. It's how you are. And you be a role model in your own life of what you want. And if you are promoting human rights, then you do it in your own life.